first get oriented, we're looking at the posterior or the back side of a patient lying right side down, left side up. So the head is to the right, the hip is to the left, the arm is up, and of course the patient's back side is to you. Let's look a little bit closer view here. And this is the back of the shoulder. Again, this is a left shoulder. Remember the patient's head is to the right. In other words, the right shoulder is down, the left shoulder is up. So this is what it looks like inside. The glenoid or socket is down. The glenoid labrum or cartilage typically surrounds the entire glenoid bone trying to deepen the socket. So here we go. The glenoid is down. The humeral head, the rounded area up top, is up. That's the ball. And the labrum is in between. Again, the labrum is designed to deepen the socket. Now here is a young patient. We're pushing forward, of course, sterilely. This is an unsterile picture down at the right. We're pushing forward, and the ball is perching inferiorly. But also look at how much we can pull the ball away from the socket. The ball, again, is round and up. The socket is down. So another thing I want to pull your attention towards is the absence of a good labrum. Again, the labrum is a cartilage that surrounds the glenoid socket and deepens the socket so we have a more stable shoulder. So when we have too much motion between the ball and the socket with pain, that is shoulder instability. A lot of people have a lot of motion, but when you add pain to it, when the motion is excessive, that is what shoulder instability is. Here's an example of an unfortunate young man. This is a different patient who has a more complex problem as you see, we're dislocating his ball on the anterior and inferior portion of the shoulder. Again, this is a left shoulder ball is up, socket is down. And you'll see a defect on the back of his ball. This, in fact, is because he's dislocated so many times, it would be like taking your fingers in an apple and pushing pressure. When you release your fingers, there's a defect remaining. So not only is there a defect on the back of the ball, here's a defect in front of the shoulder. Not only is the labrum rolled off, but there's a little fracture there. We're looking now in the back here, and our probe is in a cartilage chair in the back. So not only did this fellow have a problem bony-wise with his glenoid, but also his humeral head. He has a cartilage problem anteriorly and posteriorly, but he also has loose tissue. Back to the original patient. We're going to prepare this tissue. This is a rotary shaver. We try to get the tissue to bleed because bleeding tissue will heal. Think about a callus that cracks. It won't heal ever because it doesn't have any life to it. So we get this tissue to bleed a little bit and we can then start bringing that labrum back up on the face. Now we're placing a suture anchor. We drill a little hole, put an anchor in there, and suture is attached to this. So you will see two separate strands of suture coming out of this hole. We're bleeding just a little bit here, but that clears up with time. This is a device that allows us to work way down inferiorly in the shoulder to pass suture. Now we're grabbing tissue. Notice how we're tightening, bringing that inferior pouch, the armpit or axilla is to your left on the screen. So we go through the tissue, bring it up, and then we're going to grab the labrum and bring it also up onto the face of the glenoid. Again, we're trying to create depth on the socket side, the glenoid side, to increase our stability. We're not only just trying to get a labrum built back up in front of the shoulder, but we're also trying to tighten the capsule. Everyone is a little different. Sometimes we have to do more, sometimes less. Here we're just passing suture. The blue suture that you'll see us push through is a suture that allows us to route suture. Here we are pulling it through. You'll notice the suture has gone through all that tissue. Now this is one of the most important parts that I wanted to show you in terms of once we've passed these two sutures here. When we pull the suture before we tie it, look how much we're tightening. We're bringing that armpit, axillary area, we call that the axilla, and we're tightening, tightening it up substantially. Here we're looking posteriorly, so even by grabbing anteriorly and tightening up in this armpit area, we're tightening this area. So the ball again is above, the socket below. So when we tighten this, and then we're actually going to tie a suture here in a minute, the capsule inferiorly and posteriorly is slightly tightened, but inferiorly it is substantially tightened. Here's another look at it. So to make this permanent, we're going to have to tie a suture, in other words, a knot. And here we are. We'll show you this not once but twice. But here we are rolling that tissue up. You see the knot. And that's two throws. We actually make six throws. The third one will lock it. Here's the same picture again. 
rolling that tissue up, trying to deepen the socket, and at the same time, decreasing the volume of the capsule. Here's another throw, and we just do this outside. We have a little cannula. You see the plastic to the right. We work through these cannulae that keep the water really normal saline solution in your shoulder. Cut that suture. That's after six throws. As you, you can see after the first suture, we've done a pretty good job, but we're not done yet. We're going to pass another blue suture, and that allows us to take now the purple suture right here and route it through the tissue. The job of this suture is to bring that labrum up onto the face. Now we've also grabbed a little bit of capsule as well, reinforcing what we did with the first stitch. You can see how putting the knot on the external side or anterior side, front side of the labrum allows us to bolster up or heap up that labrum on the front of the glenoid, deepening the socket. Here we are cutting that suture. So after one anchor, which has two sutures, we've really done a great job, but we're not done yet. Here's another suture anchor hole, making a drill hole, placing the anchor, and then we will have two more pair of suture that we would use to route through that labrum, again deepening the socket anteriorly. We don't do as much of a shift of the capsule here as we roll the labrum up onto the face of the glenoid. Now we're going to fast forward here a little bit because you don't need to see every single detail, but here's in fact, the fourth of four sutures. This is just a different way to pass it through the labor. Once we do that, we tighten up and then cut that fourth suture. And then we're going to show you what we've done. So you'll notice the capsule is tighter. The labrum is up onto the face of the glenoid. We have, in a sense, a bolster, something that deepens the socket. That's part of what we're after when we talk about shoulder stability. So you could have a torn labrum like that other patient, that second example I showed you and you have a deficient labrum, a deficient depth of the socket or glenoid, or you can just have one that was never formed really well in the presence of someone who's loose jointed, who can pull their thumb back on their forearm or hyperextend elbows or knees. But here we are, and we have a nice bolster. The ball, of course, is the rounded area up to the top left, and the socket is the big space on the bottom part of your image. Now let's compare before and after. So here's before. We're starting posteriorly. Now we're almost able to dislocate the ball. We're pushing the ball forward. Again, this is a left shoulder from behind. Ball is up. Socket is down. Look how far we can bring the ball away from the socket. This is not normal. We should not be able to drive around in the shoulder like this. So this is an example of what we had before. Now, afterwards, here we have a nice bolster where the labrum is rolled up, deepening the socket. Uh, now that it's deep, we have an uh, inability uh, to dislocate the shoulder. We're trying to pull the ball away from the socket. We cannot do it like we could before the surgical procedure. This is how we do a capsular shift procedure through the arthroscope.